Hey everyone, welcome back. Kyle with Factum Financial. We've got Monty Flack with us today as well. And uh, we're back in the HGR recording studio. Today we're gonna be talking about term insurance and whole life insurance. Now, we've got an apple and a banana up here. And this is the analogy we're gonna to use to compare term life and whole life. Okay. So, both of these are fruit, but do they have anything in common? Not that I can see. I mean, different colors, different yeah. shapes, different textures, the way you eat these, all completely different. Correct. They're both fruit, but they have nothing in common. Now, let's take that and apply it to term life and whole life. Both of them are life insurance, but do they have anything in common? No, other than, like you said, life insurance. They are completely right. different. Mm -hmm. Now, when you hear things like term is better than whole life, or whole life is better than term, that really has no room to stand because it doesn't make any sense. They have nothing in common, so how could you compare them? So you know what we teach is always increase your financial IQ. So we're gonna be diving into a little bit more about term insurance and whole life, the benefits and features of each, and why you'd want one in place instead of the other. And that all depends on everyone's situation, am I right? Correct. So let's get right into this. When it comes to an insurance carrier, the way they manage risk is everything is, ver is cost versus risk. Now they are absolute masters at mitigating risk. It's why they've been around for hundreds of years and have been profitable is because they are really good at managing cost versus risk. So the reason that's significant is when you hear something like term insurance is very cheap, Whole or life, inexpensive. Or inexpensive. And whole life is what? Expensive. Is expensive. Right. Well, let's dive into that. From the insurance carrier's point of view, if something is very cheap for them to price that product, what does that tell you about it? Very low risk. Of Extremely it low risk. Yeah. So when we're talking about term insurance, you could buy a million dollars of death benefit for 50 bucks. That's pretty right. cheap or inexpensive. Inexpensive, yeah. Now, what is the chance of that term policy paying out within that time frame? Very slim. It's very slim. If, if uh, the statistics are accurate, it's less than 2%. So about 90, really 99% of term policies yeah. do not pay out in that, term t in that term period. Right. Okay, so what that tells us is your likelihood of passing away prior to age 65 or 70 is about 1%. That's pretty good. So most people will not use that term policy, right. Right? right? What is the odd of you dying after age 65? It goes up significantly. It goes up a little bit, yeah, 200%, little bit. right? Yeah. <laughs> so think about that. Term versus whole life. One is in place, obviously, for your whole life. One is just for a term. Now, we're not saying we're against term, but you have to understand what you're purchasing, okay? Term insurance does not build any cash value. There's no savings aspect to it. And typically it's not gonna be around when you need it most. Right. Now, let's go on the other side. Let's talk about whole life. Whole life, because it has actual guarantees, will absolutely pay out more than what you've put into it every single time. So let's go back to that argument. Term is cheap, whole life is expensive. That's only half of the, the sentence. What needs to be said is term insurance is very cheap until it's not whole life is very expensive until it's not exactly so whole life is going to build cash value it's literally the greatest savings tool ever how do we know that because the wealthiest companies families and corporations in the world buy it in the largest quantities that should tell you everything right there now from what i hear you saying this is like renting a house compared to buying a house i rent a house i have no equity built up even though I could stay there for 20, 30 years, I buy a house, I could be there a few years and have some equity, some, some value within the house. And especially in a market where the housing market's going up every single year, even more and more equity. That's what it sounds like you're saying. And that's, that's exactly how it works. So the longer you have the whole life policy, the more efficient it gets, the more equity in the contract you have, and that's why if you've ever seen how these policies grow, it's a true compounding curve. So the longer you have it, if you can own one of these things longer than 10 years, everyone that we've come across that's owned it that long, if not longer, will tell you 
That is their favorite asset right. because of how quickly it starts to grow. But you will not see that if you look at whole life in the first three to five years, right? Right. Compared to term, if you're going to look at it over a five-year period, of course, term is going to be the more, the more cost-effective option. But we, we want to think long-term. That's short-term thinking. We want to think long-term because life is a marathon, not, not a sprint. sprint. So if one was to buy a term policy, what type of term policy? You know, maybe they're just starting out and they can't quite afford the cost of a whole life policy, you know, and the way we design things and so forth. So if they were going to go out and buy a term policy, what type of term policy would you recommend? Great question. I'm going to go with a convertible term policy. Now, not all term insurance is created equal, just like not all whole life is created equal. Okay. You have to have the right insurance carriers and the right policy designed by someone that knows what they're doing. So most people just have plain old term. My wife and I both carry a million dollar convertible term policy. Why do we have that? Because I'm 31 right now. If I get cancer at 35 or some other medical issue, something happens in my life and suddenly the insurance company won't allow me to buy another policy, I can convert that term policy that only cost me about $40 a month into a permanent contract with no underwriting. And that's huge. That is a lot of value. Right. Because that does happen. Now we're not gonna go into scare tactics or anything like that, fear mongering. We don't teach and promote like that. But let me ask you this question. Can you buy life insurance tomorrow? No. You can't. You can only buy it today because you don't know what will happen tomorrow. Tomorrow, you could have a liver issue. Tomorrow, you could be in a car accident and killed. The only time you can buy insurance is today. Tomorrow never comes. And we have seen this a number of times already. We have a client that bought a policy or waited, you know, two, three, four years before starting. Suddenly, they come back around. Now, they're uninsurable. Mm -hmm. Some of our clients were lucky enough to get it while they were healthy enough. Something happened in the last five or six years. They come back for another one because they like what they have, uninsurable now. Yeah. That is life. Every day you get closer to graduation, you increase the likelihood of you not being insurable. Because life happens. So we are not against term. We actually love term insurance, but it needs to be the right kind that can complement you on your wealth journey. Right. Because I think it's, in, it's insane for people to not have at least a term policy. Like you Minimum. said, if they can't, you know, if they're not making enough money or they're not quite in that position to save into a whole life policy, get the term insurance at least $30, $40, $50 dollars because how many times do we see the GoFundMes? Too many. I mean, it infuriates me. It breaks my heart because it doesn't have to happen. Oh my God, goodness, this you know, individual passed away, left a few kids, they were young, no insurance, donate what you can. It doesn't have to be that way. For you know, the price of a, a dinner once a month, you could insure and protect yourself for a million dollars. Right. There's no need for that to happen. So just to reiterate, we're not against term. Uh, term is very powerful. It needs to be the right kind of term. Right. We recommend a convertible term that can complement your long-term play with the whole life policy. That absolutely will be there when your time comes. It's a giant opportunity fund while you're alive, and it's tax-free money for your heirs when you pass away. So learn about both of them and how they can complement each other, and that'll help you on your wealth building journey. So like we always say, too many people are playing the money game not to lose. The more you increase your financial IQ and understand different products, assets, processes, it'll allow you to start playing the money game to win.